Have you ever been so tired of something that you were just sick of being sick of something? Like, maybe if you're physically sick, you are just so tired and you're just sick of being sick. Maybe sick of throwing up, sick of um, having headaches, or whatever the case might be if it's a physical sickness. Or even mentally, say you just keep making the same mistake over and over again, you're just sick of being sick of making that mistake. It's like. When it first happens, you're just tired of it. You're, you feel sick about that mistake, right? And I know I'm gonna use this, for, this one word like a hundred times, but you're sick of it, right? You're sick of making that one mistake, but then you do it again, and you do it again, and it just repeats and cycles and happens over and over and over to the point that you're just sick of being sick of it. Honestly, I think that's how Texas football fans feel right about now. Thank you so much for clicking on this video. You are a good sport. This is College Football Media, and on this channel we talk college football teams, trends, and traditions, all the way to logos, history, and predictions. If that sounds interesting to you, consider subscribing for in-depth college football content. If you're a Texas football fan, think back to the end of the Mac Brown era. You get a new coach after you have kind of fallen off just a little bit, and you think you're going to be rejuvenated but you end up just falling into mediocrity. And at the end of that um, head coaching tenure, you have hope again and you think you're gonna get back out of it and build up again, but yet you still fall into that same mediocrity and you're tired of it. After one season of a new coach, or maybe two seasons after the Mac Brown era, you're tired of living in that mediocrity. You want to get out of it. You need something to move, to change, to shift, to adapt. But yet, you're still in the same state, and you're sick of it. But then, after three years, after four years, after a second head coach, and it's the same story that you're sick of year after year after year, at this point, 2020, you're just sick of being sick of it. This is not exclusive to Texas. Of course, it happens across many programs. And of course, like I uh, tried to relate, it happens in real life too. It happens in business organizations. It happens all over the place. But right now, as a college football fan, I'm sure you can see a prime example of that at Texas. Right now, they have a really good AD. He's still fairly new in his time as the AD, but they have good resources. You know they have a lot of money, and they have everything being built, the infrastructure around the program for success, for long-term success, but yet they still have not been able to find it. And while I am not qualified to call for anybody's job, there are many people that are in the weeds of the Texas program and have more uh, relationships and things of that nature just within the media field or just within uh, behind the scenes of how an organization is run they know what they're capable of, they know the infrastructure around them, and they know that really all you need is a pilot to right the ship. Um, and so other people have, that have insight in the program are the ones really kind of calling to action, is the coach the problem here? And added on to that, all you have to do is a look right across from you and see Texas A&M having the most success under Jimbo Fisher that they've had since 2012. If you're Texas, what is holding you back? You're tired of it, you're sick of it, to the point that you're sick of being sick of it. And I know I'm gonna run that phrase into the ground, but really that is the nature of the phrase to begin with if you really think about it. So if you're Texas, what's the future? What are you looking toward? The only reason you should fire Tom Herman is if you can hire somebody that is better and more equipped to take his place and push the program forward to greater heights. Now if I was the AD at Texas and had any control whatsoever, you definitely believe that you are capable to do that. You are Texas. You have the money, you have the resources, you better be able to alert anybody that you want to take that job. That's not necessarily always true, it's not always the case, but if you're Texas, you believe it to be, and it should be, honestly. And so everybody's looking at, well, who else but Urban Meyer to take that job. Look, I don't know if that's gonna happen. I'm not making any predictions, okay? But it's the name being floated out. There is smoke. Usually where there's smoke, there's fire, or that's how the saying goes. It's not always the case. 
but it is at least probably being considered. No decisions have been made, of course. Um, it's the middle of the season. Tom Herman is still the head coach at Texas. For all I know, he could be at this time next year as well. Of course, you're still dealing with COVID ramifications. Can you fire a person while you're in the midst of a global pandemic? Financially, that doesn't always make a lot of sense. Of course, Texas is probably the best example of an exception, but Clemson just, at least for the time being, got rid of their track and field program, which I hope is resurrected, but you really don't know how these things go. All that being said, if you're a fan, you want to get back to winning. Urban Meyer definitely can do that. In the past, whether it be the SEC or the Big Ten, when Urban Meyer was a coach, he raises the standard, he raises the level of the entire conference. I don't think that would change if he became a coach in the Big 12. I think definitely Urban Meyer would raise the stakes of the entire conference, which is always a good thing. And I don't think it takes a genius to realize the state of the program, where they are right now, and how sad it really is. They haven't been good since 2009. That's been 11 years. And of course, there are other programs that are, are in a far worse state. However, Texas's expectations are higher than that, and rightfully should be. They have fan investment, they have money, they have resources. There's no reason that they shouldn't dominate year in and year out. At least getting their fair share against Oklahoma, which they haven't always consistently been able to do. No disrespect to Oklahoma, they deserve everything they've gotten. They are a good football team. Of course, this year they've kind of gone down a slump, but yet Texas has not been able to capitalize on that. So, of course, Oklahoma will swing back up as long as Lincoln Riley stays there. So if you're Texas, you need to progress as well. And, of course, you hope Urban Meyer comes and is able to do that. If not, of course, you have to have other coaches in mind. A lot of eyes are turning to the Liberty's head coach, Hugh Freeze. You might remember him at Ole Miss not that long ago. And that sweepstakes will be very, very fun to watch. You could also look at Luke Fickle at Cincinnati. Would he be willing to go anywhere else? Um, that would be a fun question. He's kind of an Ohio State guy, but that job is pretty locked down for the foreseeable future. So, of course, head coaching names will continue to come up later in the season once once people are actually beginning to uh, lose their jobs and are fired, of course, things could be different because of the pandemic. I think we all realize that. Um, there may not be as many people fired. Um, it, USC, how does that job go? That is a very significant thing that will probably directly affect Texas because they're kind of rival competitors on that level of blue blood programs that are not at the level that they should be and could be. So, of course, only time will be able to tell what actually does happen at Texas um, if the smoke about Urban Meyer turns out, or if he decides to not take that job and just leave it be. Maybe waiting out, or just wanting to stay in the media for his health for the time being. Of course, a lot of this week's games were canceled. At least five big, big games. LSU, Alabama, Ohio State, Maryland, Georgia, Missouri, Texas A&M, and Tennessee, and Auburn, Mississippi State, all have been postponed or canceled this week. Um, there is still a few games that will be good this week. Wisconsin, Michigan is what you hope to be good. Of course, Michigan, you also don't know a whole lot about them right now. Um, that's another program with a lot of eyes on it, of course, as you all, I'm sure, know. Um, but a lot of the other games this year, or this week, rather, are based on can you take care of business? Oregon. Can you take care of business? USC, can you take care of business? That's what it boils down to. That doesn't always happen. So I do expect, of course, upsets like you have every week um, about those teams that don't take care of business, but it's pretty hard to predict who will and who won't. So that's what we all watch the sport for. Looking forward to this week. We'll see about Wisconsin, Michigan. Of course, Wisconsin hasn't played in like a month. Um, remember that. Um, they've had a lot of games canceled previously the past couple weeks. I want to say three. Um, so they haven't played in a long time. And Michigan, from week one to week two, looked a lot, lot different. Could that happen with, with Wisconsin? It could. I don't expect it to. 
um, but that's how these things go. So, thank you so much for watching this video. If you're a Texas fan, let me know in the comment section down below how you feel about the sad state of your program. Do you want Tom Herman gone? Do you want him to stay? What head coaches um, or potential prospects for a head coach would you like to see come up um, if that does indeed play out the way uh, that we are talking about? So, if you enjoyed the video, consider hitting the like button if you enjoyed it and subscribing for more in-depth college football content. So again, thank you so much to wa for watching all the way through the end of the video. You can check me out on social media. But until next time, be goody now.